Wind howls across a frozen wasteland. Snow drifts over an endless ice age plain. Only twisted branches and jagged rocks break the monotony of white. Life seems impossible in this frozen hell. But beneath the snow, something stirs. A massive shape rouses itself from its slumber, shakes off the icy flakes, and lets out a trumpeting call. It is a sound that has echoed across the ages, a sound that once belonged to the giants of the Ice Age, a sound that whispers of a world long past, the world of the woolly mammoths. Long before humans built cities, before history was written, giants roamed the earth, covered in thick fur, with tusks curving like the moon. The woolly mammoth ruled the Ice Age. Today, we follow the story of one mammoth from birth, to survival, to the very end of its kind. Our story begins 30,000 years ago. On the endless steppe, a calf is born, barely able to stand, surrounded by her mother and the safety of the herd. At first, the calf is clumsy, unsteady on her feet. Her fur, though thick, is matted and un- Yet, as the days grow longer and the sun climbs higher in the sky, the calf grows stronger, more confident. Her legs, thick and sturdy, carry her over the frozen grasses with ease, and her tusks, small at first, begin to curve and grow, becoming weapons and tools. Life here is harsh blizzards cut through the plains, predators stalk the weak, but the mammoth calf is never alone. Herds were families, led by wise matriarchs who remembered where food and water could be found, even in the dead of winter. These matriarchs had seen many seasons, many winters, and many dangers. They knew the secrets of the steppe and passed them down to each new generation. And so it was that the young mammoth learned the ways of her people, how to use her trunk to pull grass through the snow, how to follow the footsteps of her elders, and how to listen to the warnings of the herd. The calf listens closely to the matriarchs, to the stories they tell of icy rivers and hidden oases, of saber-toothed cats and ghostly white winters. She watches them work together, how they trumpet warnings, and how they stand shoulder to shoulder against the blizzard. As she grows, she becomes part of this grand tapestry, her own story woven into the fabric of the herd. But danger lurks everywhere. One day, as the mammoths graze near a frozen river, a shape emerges from the snow-laden trees. It is a saber-toothed cat a hunter of the Ice Age, sleek and deadly. The mammoths trumpet, their tusks flash in the sunlight, and the cat turns tail and flees. The mammoth calves watch in awe as their elders drive away the predator. They know that one day, they, too, will need to defend themselves. And so they learn from the best, practicing their tusks and their calls until they, too, can stand up to any threat. One afternoon, the mammoths must cross the icy river. The water is freezing, but the mammoths plunge in and swim to the other side. The calves shiver, their teeth chattering, but they make it across safely. On the other side, the mammoths trumpet in triumph. The river is crossed. Soon, life returns to normal. The hunt for food, the search for water, and the constant struggle to survive in a frozen world. Years pass, and the mammoth grows tall, her tusks long and powerful. She now weighs over six tons and can live for decades. Mammoths were not just survivors, they were gardeners of the Ice Age. Their heavy feet churned the soil. Their grazing shaped the land keeping vast grasslands alive for countless other species. But while they ruled the cold, change was coming. In the faraway lands, something new was stirring, something that would one day shake the foundations of the Ice Age world. Humans had emerged, small, nimble hunters with clever minds and sharp tools. At first, the mammoths barely noticed these new arrivals. They were too busy searching for food, too focused on surviving another blizzard or saber-tooth attack. One day, a human hunter stands hidden behind a snowdrift, a spear in his hand. He watches a herd of mammoths grazing nearby, their tusks glinting in the sun. The mammoths are oblivious to the danger that lurks in the snowdrifts. The human hunter raises his spear and throws it finds its mark, sinking deep into the flesh of a young mammoth. The mammoth trumpets in pain, collapsing to the ground. The hunter and his companions rush forward, hacking at the beast with their stone tools, taking what they can carry and leaving the rest for the scavengers. This is the first battle between man and mammoth, a battle that will be repeated countless times over the next few thousand years. For humans, the mammoths were everything, food, fur, bones, for tools and shelters. But for the mammoths, the humans were a new and dangerous predator, one that hunted in packs and used cunning and guile to take down even the mightiest of mammoths. Every mammoth mother worries about her children when the humans are near. She teaches them to stay close, to listen for the warning calls, and to run if they hear the dreaded whistling of spears. Yet despite the danger, life goes on. The mammoths continue to roam the steppes, to graze in the meadows and to raise their young. They trumpet to each other across the miles, their voices echoing across the plains. Generations pass, and the balance of power shifts. The mammoths, once masters of the grasslands, find themselves on the defensive, forced to flee from the advancing humans and their sharper weapons. As the Ice Age ends, the earth grows warmer. The vast grasslands shrink, replaced by forests. The mammoths, built for cold, are forced into smaller, harsher refuges. Here, the going is tough. 
the food is scarce, and the danger is ever-present. Still, the mammoths endure. They have survived ice and fire, saber-toothed cats, and human spears. They will not be denied their place in the world, but the end is inevitable. On Wrangell Island in the Arctic, a tiny group of mammoths struggles to survive. The island is small, the resources are limited, and the mammoths are dying. One by one, they fall victims of starvation, exposure, or human spears. Only one remains, a matriarch, ancient and weary. She walks along the edge of the Arctic Sea, her tusks worn, her body thin. She is the last mammoth, and she is dying. As she walks, the wind whistles around her, carrying the scent of the sea and the memory of her ancestors. She remembers the days of the great herds, of mammoths thundering across the tundra, their trumpets echoing across the plains. But those days are gone forever. Now she is alone, the last of her kind, and the world is a colder, emptier place for it. She collapses on the frozen ground, her eyes staring blankly ahead. Her breathing grows slower, her heart beats fainter. As the life ebbs from her, she lets out one final trumpet, a sound that carries the weight of generations, a sound that speaks of loss and extinction, a sound that is the last song of the mammoths. And with that, the mammoths vanished from the face of the earth, leaving behind only their bones and the echo of their trumpets. But the story of the woolly mammoth doesn't end here. Their legacy lives on in our myths, in our bones, and in our imagination. The woolly mammoth is gone, but its story lives on. We have brought the mammoth back to life through science, through fossils, and through our collective memory. We tell stories of mammoths to remind ourselves of the giants that once roamed our planet, and we dream of a world where mammoths and humans lived side by side. Perhaps one day, we will see them again, not in the skies, but in our hearts and minds. If the earth cools again and the glaciers return, the mammoths may rise again, their tusks gleaming in the sunlight, their trumpets echoing across the frozen wastelands. Until then, we have the bones, the fossils, and the stories to remind us of the mammoths and their place in the grand tapestry of life. Would you bring the mammoth back if you could? What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.